Hello and welcome back everyone. Today's uh, short video session I'm going to give a quick uh, output of what we did in one of our uh, Jan uh, 2010 batches. We've used gmail.com as an application to uh, learn about actions and how we can apply a data driven automation framework in the gmail.com. So what we did is we automated gmail.com, we created multiple actions and we made Gmail send emails, multiple emails to different recipients uh, using a specific data that we gave in Excel. So here is what uh, we started off with. Uh, we started off with uh, ground level uh, plan, saying what is it that we want to achieve? What are the different manual steps that we will have while working with Gmail? Primarily you are opening the browser, logging in, uh, clicking on the compose, entering the information for the email, send that email out, log out and close browser. And out of these few steps, uh, the three, four, five are the ones which will repeat for multiple sets of data. data. We've used uh, shared object repositories, uh, we've used uh, input and output parameters to the actions so that uh, each action can be called from a driver script and which will uh, then pass the information. In the same Excel file, we have two other sheets. One is a user data sheet and this sheet is primarily uh, where I load the URL, the browser, uh, the email ID and the password. And there's a receiver data sheet in which is primarily all the information about uh, the email address of the recipient, the name, uh, subject, body. So it's a basic version of uh, auto emailer kind of a software that we could develop and we could apply it uh, anywhere we want but primarily with the intent that uh, we will uh, learn and uh, practice extensively on actions and VB scripting in our QTP. So now let's uh, uh, let me show you the different actions and what we created. So I stored all the actions each for each step uh, in this test Gmail actions one. So the first is open browser where I use system util dot run to open the browser then comes the login action. So all the parameters that are passed when this action gets called will have the related information for login. As part of the login, we will also see if a logout is necessary in case we are already signed into Google. One uh, uh, specific guidance or note that you have to follow is try and use basic HTML as your default view as uh, the more advanced version of HTML and Gmail application uh, will have dynamic frames and which is not currently handled in this script. So use basic HTML when you're trying to repeat the same. So after we click on the compose email, uh, then again we capture the parameter in terms of the email subject body, the recipient information, and these are passed when this action gets called. And uh, then they are entered into the application and we check to see using that web element where we get a message saying your message has been sent. Uh, once we check for that, then we put this as an output parameter which can later be uh, translated back into your Excel or wherever you're driving this test from. Then we have the logout and a closer browser. These are the different actions we have. Now let's quickly look at the uh, driver script. So this is the Jan 25th batch folder where I've added everything. Now we have the driver script. The driver script is primarily the source from which these reusable actions that I just showed you are being called from. So the flow for this uh, is primarily that uh, we start with creating new sets of data tables instead of using the ones which come in when you call different actions. The reason is we have more flexibility when we use our own uh, we add sheet using the add sheet method we create our own data sheet. So I've created two new data table uh, I've imported the information that is stored in the Excel file that I've shown to you earlier into the user data, D user data and D receiver data from those source sheets. Next, what we do is we get the row count for each of these data tables. What that will help us do is we can then see how many rows of users are there, the sender or the user who's actually sending the email where the login information is there and the receiver, how many rows are there. Depending on those number of uh, rows, we have two for loops, one starting on line 15 and the other on line 24. 
uh, the code uh, from line 17 primarily goes that uh, we set the focus on each current row, go through each row, get the information that is needed and call those reusable actions that I showed you in the other uh, Gmail Actions 1 test. So open browser in Gmail Actions 1 is called uh, for one time and the, we are passing the user data into it, the URL. The next one we call for login and passing the ID and password into it. So similarly, once we've logged in, then these uh, specific actions are repeated for multiple recipients. So this information is primarily for the receiver's data. So the compose email, entering the email information and uh, doing the send is done for multiple iterations. And finally, once I get out of the first for loop, unless we have uh, more iterations to complete, you can close the loop. Now let's quickly look at how the uh, run will happen as a quick workflow. So while the run is happening, I'll try and uh, explain how we came up with this in our uh, class. So let's do the run and see how uh, it's going to work now. So the run is going to execute for each and every row within the uh, code that we sent. It's going to first go and open up the Internet Explorer, which was a reusable action that we created. After it does that, the first thing uh, the action reusable action is going to try and do is see if we are already logged in. So it's going to run the logout action. It's going to check if the sign out button is existing link. And if it is, it's going to sign us out. Now it's going to try and sign us in while QTP will execute everything from the driver script and it's going to call those reusable actions. So for each row in that receiver Excel sheet that we saw, it is going to now send the email. So let's see how it works. It's going to set the focus on each uh, point within the row. Now it's going to compose email, uh, send the email. And finally, it's going to give us a confirmation back. You could take this confirmation back into the Excel sheet to see the status of every email sent. So now it's going to confirm back saying that the email has been sent. So if I add this variable to watch, you can see the email sent status. So for any email that has not been sent and where am I capturing if the email has been sent or not, is I'm capturing this web element to see if uh, that email has been sent. So once I capture this and see if this is displaying, then I know that email confirmation is good. I'm going to continue the run and let the test execute for all the rows in the Excel sheet. So depending on the number of rows you have, you could customize uh, this particular uh, script to handle multiple emails, receivers, you can customize the message further and so on. I hope uh, this short utility has given you a brief idea about uh, the actions, how to work with them. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach me at qtp.elearn at gmail.com or you can call me at 314-827-5272. Thank you for your time and appreciate it. Bye.